Welcome to the Bridge Connection. Glad you're here with me today. Uh, we're in a great chapter, the 17th chapter of John. It's a uh, specifically a good chapter for us right now. There are so many people on, on two sides of, of our culture right now, and uh, there's a lot of hatred, a lot of dissension. There's a lot of uh, believers that are pretty upset, a lot of people in the world that are disappointed, other people are happy. It's just a it's just not a real good time right now. And it's probably as divided as our country has ever been uh, since the Civil War. And so we were concerned about that. But when we got in the book of John, we just didn't just wasn't happenstance. We ended up in John chapter 17, which is our Lord's high priestly prayer for himself, first of all. First thing we saw in this chapter is he prayed for himself that he would be restored to um, that place in heaven that he was with his father be before he came. And then he started praying for his disciples, those who were right there with him. But so much of what he prayed for them, we enter into that too, okay? But And then, near the end of this chapter, he prays specifically for us. So it's, uh, and he says some very important things, even right now where the world is. He says some important things for us as believers. Well, I didn't finish yesterday when he was talking about, he was praying for the his, his disciples and us to um, be free and, and, and not be overtaken by the world and, and to be separate from the world and not to be sucked up by the evil in the world. And we talked about that, but we just kind of... Um, uh, didn't finish up, ran out of time. And so I wanted to continue that thought a little bit. And there are three, what I think, primary reasons why God the Father needed to protect the disciples from the world and the devil, okay? Uh, first of all, the world and the devil absolutely hated the disciples of Jesus. Do you know why? The world and the devil hated the disciples of Jesus because the disciples of Christ have the word of God. And it's, it's, um, it's the word that reveals God's love. It reveals a sacrificial love that gives all it has is different from the love that the world wants. See, God's holiness and God's justice and man's depravity and uh, that's uh, that's a fact that 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 man refuses to to face that he's depraved and God is holy doesn't doesn't want to be confronted with that. Jesus Christ, the Son of God Himself, who demands total allegiance and commitment to God to become a a, a servant of God. Secondly, the disciples were were not of the world, just as. Jesus was not of the world, and we aren't either. Now listen why. Jesus came from God, out of, came from out of heaven, came from the Father. Uh, the disciples and other believers, including us, were born again by the Spirit of God and given the very life of God, the very character of God. God lives within us. And the world and the devil want absolutely nothing to do with a, a selfless, sacrificial nature. That's how we're supposed to be living. A righteous and godly nature that, that gives everything, no matter what, to meet the needs of the diseased and the starving and the lost masses of the world. The disciples were needed in the world. The need was not for them to be taken out of the world. The need was for them to be kept from the evil one or from Satan. I, I just, I, I, I love the the, the Lord's Prayer. You can say it with me if you want to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and let us forgive and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us or that's, you know, our trans trespasses or whatever you want to put there. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's stop there for a minute. 
Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So he was teaching his disciples to pray exactly what he was praying, to be delivered from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I love that prayer. I've been praying it a lot recently, uh, just because I, it, it just speaks volumes to me as I, as I kind of re reread it again and wanted to apply it to my life, you know. But see, God's mission uh, to save the world depended upon the disciples' loyalty, depended upon their their faithfulness. It also depends on on our loyalty and our faithfulness as believers. And they had to be kept and protected and covered with the armor of God. And these men, these 11 men that were left at that point were, were just absolutely going to go through incredible pain, incredible disappointment and punishment. And it's going to start with the loss of Jesus on the cross. And then when he's resurrected and then, and then he goes back to the father and he just leaves these, these poor dudes. Okay, now you go tell the world about me. And they did, and then they never faltered. And before that, they were confused a little bit after he died, very confused, And but after he rose again and they had that relationship with him and they saw who he was, he was raised from the dead, they never faltered and they, all but one died a martyr's death and uh, incredible. So he's praying for them because they, they needed his power, his, author, his authority. And this truth of him being in us and the Holy Spirit living within us is so glorious. We just have to keep talking about it. Notice it's also the main reason the world and the devil attack the believer because he just can't stand the things of God. Pick it up verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, but they also, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So the fourth thing that he's praying for them is sanctification. Uh, Jesus prayed that God would sanctify the disciples. Notice the two things said about the, the disciple or, or, or believers. First of all, he is to be sanctified. He's to be sanctified through God's truth and God's God's word. And see, God's truth is said to be God's word. God's word referred to both the living word and the, the full revelation of God in Jesus Christ revealed, you know, through Jesus Christ and to the spoken or, or written word. The disciples need to be set apart to God through his truth. Sanctification to be set up, set aside, set apart for the purpose of God, no longer for the purpose of the world or anything else, but God's purpose only. They were being sent into the world just as, just as Jesus had been sent into the world. Jesus had come into the world to bring men back to the Father through reconciliation. The disciples had to be set apart for this same task. That's why they're. That's why they were here. That's why we're here. Sanctification is the way of salvation chosen to to reach the world jesus had set himself apart to please the father and he pleased the father to the ultimate degree no matter the cost the glory of god was to be done perfect obedience to father god was the chosen way of salvation being set apart to to serve and worship god is is what salvation is all about this is the reason Jesus prayed for his disciples to be set apart, to be sanctified, to be holy. You know, I think believers are, are sanctified through the truth. That is, through God's word. It's through the study and the application of God's word that, that we're set apart unto God. As we study God's word, he sees more and more, we see more and more how we are to live. And, and we see that we can set ourselves apart to live the way God tells us to live. The word of God holds new instructions for us every day. The word of God shows 
us how to be more and more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ every day. But notice this crucial point. We must come to the truth, to the word of God, constantly. If you really want to be set apart for the purposes of God, you've got to be in the word every day. You know, maybe some days it's going to be less than other days, but you've got to set aside apart, set time apart, set aside time <laughs> to spend with God. And it's got to be daily because that's how we grow. That's how we know the truth. That's how we know we're supposed, how we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to say, how we're supposed to handle the culture we live in now when, when we're ridiculed for, for just being who we are or, or judged for that, or others are judged for who they are. And, and, uh, there's separation in that. And it's, and the only way we're going to make it, the only way we're going to understand how to live in, in this culture is to be in the word every single day. Verse 20. Huh. Here we go. We're going to, he's going to be praying for us a little bit now. I do not pray for these alone but also for those who believe in me through their word. So those who have been saved because of the disciples, because of other believers talking to them, he's praying for them. Jesus prayed for all future believers, for all those who would believe the message of the early disciples. This is so precious. Jesus prayed for us, for you. Listen to me, Jesus prayed for you and he prayed for me. For all of us who believe right now today, he prayed for us. Just think for a moment, who is the weakest believer on earth today? Who is the strongest? Of course, only God knows that. But think of the preciousness of the fact Jesus prayed for both the strongest and the weakest. He's prayed for all of us, every one of us, for the weakest as well as the strongest, for the diseased as well as the healthy for the orphan as well as for the children of God, for the widow, for the widower, as well as for the couple, for, excuse me, for, for the prisoner, as well as, as for the free, for the believer in the darkest jungle, as well as for the believer in the limelight. There is no thought any more precious than the thought that Jesus prayed for us all. Every one of us who believe today, Jesus prayed for. In fact, it goes beyond that. He's praying for you right now, man. He's constantly before the Father making intercession. He's the reason we can have access into the Holy of Holies because of Jesus and who he is and what he's accomplished. Notice this, this verse gives the three essentials. It's kind of laid out there and I saw it. The essentials for anybody to become believers. There's the messenger of God, the disciple of Jesus Christ, the, the person who proclaims the word so that men can believe on the name of Jesus. There has to be a messenger and proclaim the message. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans chapter 10. And you know, every one of us needs to be a messenger of Christ. He's placed people in your life I'll never be able to talk to. He's placed people in my life that you probably will never talk to. And we're to share the gospel. <laughs> now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray for you in, in Christ's place. Be reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21. 
So number one, I said there is the ambassador for somebody to be saved. There's three elements. There's the ambassador. There's the messenger. Um, I'm saved today because people talk to me. Over the years, it was a variety of people. My family, my mom, my grandparents. Oh, my grandparents. Sometimes I'll tell you some stories about them. What strong people of faith they were. I had friends talk to me. I had people talk to me. And then one day it was, everybody had planted the seed, others had watered. And then another guy came along that I worked for and uh, reaped the harvest when he started talking about Jesus. There were several messengers before I got the, got the message the way that I needed to get it. And that happens a lot. And he says, some plant the seed, some water and some reap. And so that's what happened in my life. So there is first of all that, the messenger. Secondly, there is the word, God's word. The messenger is God's messenger, his ambassador. Therefore, the word he takes to the world must be God's word. Notice the reference to God's word in this chapter alone, okay? <laughs> um, 17.6, they have kept your word. 17.14, I have given them your word. 17.17, 17, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. And thirdly, there's belief. So there's the messenger, there's the word, and then there's belief. We must believe the word we receive from the messenger. You know, we are the Lord's disciples today because somebody shared God's word with us, just shared who Jesus was. <laughs> it was the word of God that was given to us and then we believed. We had to believe the word. We didn't understand it all. I'd heard it most of my life and I didn't understand it. It didn't make sense to me because I wasn't running with Christian people for most of my young life. And uh, I didn't understand it. And, and but uh, I knew it was truth, whether I understood it or not. And every day since then, it's more and more has been, been revealed. And, and I know whom I have believed. I know Jesus. And I'm totally persuaded he is able to keep that, which I commit unto him against that day. Verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, and me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Wow, what a prayer that they may all be one as you and I are one, that they may be one in us, that we can be one with God and be one with one another. And it seems impossible except Jesus prayed it. So it's absolutely possible and necessary. Jesus requested that we, we would be one. How critical. The imperative that absolutely must exist between believers. It's the central theme of Jesus' prayer. We must be one. The standard for unity is the oneness between Jesus and the Father. And believers, we are to be one just as the Father and Jesus are one. The very same kind of unity they have is to be the unity existing between us. And the purpose for unity is that the world may believe that the Father sent Jesus. God sent Jesus. We're going to stop there and pick it up there tomorrow. The reason that God prayed for the unity, the reason that we are to be one with believers, we can't argue about every doctrine that comes along. We need to uh, let some things slide. As long as we believe on the main things, believe that Jesus is God himself. He came in the flesh. He died on the cross and his blood was shed to wipe away my sin. He was buried on the third day. He rose again and he's coming back for his church. 
and anything, uh, all kinds of other doctrines, we can get along, man. Those, these we have to agree on. But we need to, we need to be one. You know, I don't care how you worship or how you don't worship. I don't care what you do in your church services or don't do. It makes no difference, man. It's just loving Jesus. I want to love you, man. And and we need to be one as we are one, as he and the Father are one. Why? So we can let the world that the Father sent Jesus to save the world. That's our purpose. That's our purpose, to let the world know that Jesus came to save them. Father, oh, I thank you for this incredible prayer. <laughs> I, I, I think I could talk, do a study on just each sentence, Lord, but I just don't have the time to do that. But I thank you, Jesus, for praying for me, for every brother and sister listening right now, every brother and sister that isn't listening right now, Lord, you prayed for them. You prayed that we would be one. You prayed that we would be set apart and holy. We prayed that we would be messengers. God, use us. Use us in this culture right now, in the world that is so <laughs> messed up. Lord, let us walk with our heads held high and that joy that's inside, let it kind of burst forth out of our, our lives and the behavior that we have. And when people say things we don't agree with or we don't like, we're going to smile and God bless them and, and just see if they have any needs we can help meet. And, and we don't have to be, we don't have to be right except on the truth of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be together, to study your word. Fill us with your life and your peace. It's in your name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Let's, let's allow him. He prayed that we would have joy. Let's allow him to give us that joy. He prayed that we would set ourselves apart, that we would be holy. He prayed that we would be men and women of the word. You know what? I want to be an answer to Jesus' prayer. I do. I want to be one with believers everywhere. I want to be an answer to the prayer that Jesus prayed to his father. I want to be part of that answer. And I'm certain you do too. Well, I'm going to start all over again. See you tomorrow. Bye.